Hello guys and welcome to a brand new video. Today I'm here with Shaman King episode number 34. Okay, the previous episode, um, it was the end of the mini arc of uh, Anna and Yo's backstory and it was really one of the most uh, amazing arcs of Shaman King that I've seen and it was so good. It had like, you know, so many things it actually made us understand uh, how, like, you know, the, the, uh, the, what do you call it the depth depth of the bond between uh yo and anna and the promise that yo made to anna before that yeah i'll become the shaman king and help you which unfortunately now that he has like you know he has opted out from the matches uh, from the tournament and he that's why he was like no i cannot fulfill our promise anymore like the significance of that like all these time like you know like i've been hearing you kind of telling anna that sorry anna like i won't be able to like, you know fulfill my promise it, it just was there and I, I was like okay like maybe they had a promise that you know like that was it but now after seeing the backstory i'm like okay you know like the depth of that one word is actually setting in now like after seeing their backstory and so like you know like you know the backstory was really one of the most beautiful parts of the show that i've seen and i i thoroughly enjoyed it and okay so now i'm guessing we're going to come back to um, the present time uh what happened to ren and what will happen to yo all that stuff i'm sure we're going to see in this episode so yeah let's see without further ado let's get started this is episode number 34 of shaman king so i'll be putting the subtitles and the timer here Think it to whichever is your preference and let's get started all right so here's the countdown three two one go oh he's telling this to okay i mean that model. <laughs> yeah oh boy pointless battles yeah oh Okay, so he still. He still wants to defeat Hao. <laughs> oh. Eh. Well, there you go, another slap. <laughs> Phantom left. <laughs> Mm. Okay. All right. So, plan of getting to fighting how is still there. Whoa! Wait. <laughs> that one slap. Okay. All right. Well, Anna's slap also leveled up, I guess, all this time. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, so... Okay, now that I'm seeing this, like, all this time I had, like, a feeling that, okay, maybe they're showing that Yo is, like, you know, out of the match, but somehow he'll be able to get in again. Like, this was the thing that I was kind of thinking all the time. Now I'm getting a different feeling. I'm feeling like maybe Ren is going to be the one who is going to fight in the tournament and dominate the tournament while Yo himself and Anna and Lunke, like they will try to like you know count, counteract the situation through some other ways not through the tournament through some other ways and something like you know like as as they said like the plan of fighting how still stands they won't do it through the tournament they they will do it through some other means okay i'm getting this feeling now now obviously like there might be like you know like as i said the, my initial feeling of thinking that maybe he'll somehow be able to get 
into the tournament again that might be also like you know that might also be the case in the future but we still don't know about that but for now i'm thinking that maybe not maybe he's going to counteract the situation in some other way all right let's see anyways <clears throat> to be king revived wow <clears throat> my god ren will be mad after he gets up come on marcus what the hell i don't think john will do that oh my god so Yeah, what the hell, Marcus? Mark, I forgot his name. Yeah. I don't know. I think this guy will probably become a problem in the future. This, what was his name? Marco. Yeah, I was calling him Marcus. <laughs> I think this guy will become a problem in the future. I doubt he'll be able to do that. He'll be a lot stronger after he gets up, like, you know, wakes up. No, he's fighting, the, like, you know, he's getting revived. He'll getting more, he's going to get more strong. Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> okay. Oh, this, okay, it's getting a flashback. My God. Yeah. Yeah, he didn't stop after that. Oh my god. Well, the past is going to burden him from here onwards. Whoa. What are those? Okay, well... Mm. Yeah. Oh. Oh no. Yeah, he kills him out. Oh my god. Oh. Yeah. Well, his understanding now at least.
Oh, he knows. He all his he can see it from. Oh boy. Okay. <laughs> you. Okay. Yeah. Wait a minute, will you have to like... Oh, okay. Oh. Okay. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> um <laughs> he was like why is it not me <laughs> oh my god oh <laughs> okay <laughs> understandable <laughs> Um, Ryu is a lot stronger than you. <laughs> there you go. Um, don't you try your... Oh my god, this guy is going to be a problem. Well, you won't be able to do anything. Ren is like, like hundred times stronger now. I think. Like, f yep. There you go. Yeah. Yo, that. Oh my god. Okay. Okay, he took it a lot more. And like accepted a lot easier I thought I thought he would be like fuming and everything <clears throat> oh my god okay well yeah that was the promise so <laughs> oh boy, now Ren's going to slap him. <laughs> okay, Ren's going to slap him now. I'm oh, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah and this is a big one yeah okay he's taking it a lot more easier i was not expecting that well he matured i guess hmm <laughs> oh my god. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Physical reminder, true. Wow. Yeah, he completely changed. Okay, this is good. I was kind of waiting. Okay. Uh, 
Okay, well... <laughs> no! Mm. Yeah, it's... Oh, okay, yeah. Should they need to actually, you know, get more stronger? But the question is, how? Oh, what's happening? Oh, those guys. Oh, great. Oh, no, this is the... Uh, uh, what was their name? I forgot. Oh. Iceman, yeah. Is that Lego? Those are Legos, aren't they? Oh... Yeah, okay, they're a lot stronger. Whoa, more than 100 times. Hmm. Oh no. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. After even after. Like, you know, after seeing Ren's death like that, like, that thing. Oh my god. Wait, what's Chocolate doing? There you go. I was thinking he's probably going to step in. No, wait. Oh no, no, wait, wait. Oh, that's horror. Okay. Where did Chocolov go? He was just following him. <laughs> yeah, it wouldn't work on him. Yeah. Okay. Oh my god. Um, I doubt that worked. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Okay, well... Ah, oh, come on. Yeah, how's that like he'll surely come here? Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Well, not that, but he'd still come. Okay. <laughs> oh no, yeah.
Wait. Oh. Okay, these are true. Oh, oh, this is the dad. Okay. <laughs> He's like, yeah, let me just grab these. <laughs> Salary man. Okay. Well, you're gonna get beaten up now. There you go. Whoa. Five to wait. Oh, my God. Yeah, like five with that power with five thousand. Go to Pokur. Power. Wait, what? Rayoku. Okay. Okay. So her his raw damage is more. Okay. Okay. I'll I'll talk about this later. Oh, isn't like in a how? Limbless torso. Yeah, he almost got. He died. He said something like, <laughs> "Come on, L let a man talk about his backstory." You know, or died luck. Oh, wait. Oh, wait, he can. I guess they're like al allying with him. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Okay. Well, that was okay. that was it. Okay, so quite a few things happened in this episode. Mm. <clears throat> okay, so now the whole thing about I think radio ku, I think they said something about that spiritual energy or something. Now, as far as I could understand, I think it's basically that you know, like they are kind of uh, putting a number on Furyoku, like 5,000, 20,000, like that. But that means that that's just the, um, the power that, uh, I don't know, like, it's probably something like that, this, you know, that um, like if a person has strength from within, has more strength, you know, even with less, um, what can I say? 
like both the spiritual energy reiroku and furoku are needed like furoku having a lot of furoku helps but at the same time if your reiroku is low even having a lot of furoku won't help you like 20000 or something it won't help but if your reiroku is more or spiritual energy i think that's what they called it is more then with a lot less furoku you can do the same thing so i'm guessing it's basically like um the core strength or something like that the radio crew they're talking about okay that's it like i, I wasn't properly able to uh, make uh, what can i say like an example like for example um uh what can i say like yeah okay um let's like if furoku is the amount of techniques fighting techniques or martial art techniques you know like i'm just like making an example like, like you know like a comparison or something like that if furoku is something like that the amount of techniques you have the amount of way you can fight and everything uh, ryoku is something which is your raw strength so if you if your raw strength is less but you know a lot of martial arts it will help but it won't work in the long run even if you know a lot of martial arts but if your raw strength or core strength is more that is ryoku is more even with the less amount of furoku you can like you know defeat people easily like you can just slap someone and he'll just go down <laughs> without even knowing <laughs> you know any proper martial arts so it's probably something like that as, as far as i could understand so okay so so this kind of means that the furoku basically that means that everything does not depend on it like the, you might find someone with like a 1 million furoku but maybe the reiroku is quite low like it would it might be something like that so yeah so the combination of both is the thing that matters <laughs> okay um so here in this episode we see that uh, uh yo has been actually telling the story the uh, story the the flashback story that we saw to amida maru and he explained everything and then we again like anna comes in <laughs> and anna's like you know what i knew that some some day or the other something like this will happen because you're too soft hearted i forgive you so but that does not mean that we will stop trying to go for how we will go and defeat how but not through the tournament and yeah like that's you know that's i think that's doable because what was the main reason of them actually going into the shaman tournament because they wanted to be the shaman king they wanted to become strong and they did not want how to become the shaman king that was the main goal so if uh, like ren can handle that hopefully so ren can handle that while yo can do something else you know like without going through the uh, tournament he can just n n normally train and try like you know get stronger and try to defeat how like that so that's like a you know like a visible path the way you can do it now like all, all this time I, I i also have been kind of uh thinking that oh yeah like he won't be able to fight in the shaman tournament so yeah there's no way he can defeat how but now yeah like this episode kind of made me realize that no like the shaman tournament was just a path she can go through a different path and like you know reach the same result it is possible it will be a lot like difficult you know because obviously like he won't be able to become a shaman king it will be a lot more difficult but yeah like it is still doable hopefully so we'll see <clears throat> okay um then we go to the shift to the um, part of ren where he's getting resurrected and now here's the thing marco um I don't know he it feels like he he might become a problem later on like um like at least he's like you know like loyal to Jun but who knows like the way he's doing stuff it kind of makes me feel as if he's actually going to turn on all of them in the future because you know like his ideals the way he thinks things should be done it's actually like you know like he he cannot do it like that because here in this uh, episode he was like oh now that we have ren with us let's just kill him and jan was like no like i made a promise like you know whoever that was even if it was house brother i will fulfill the promise and marco marco was 
like very like you know like i don't know like very bothered by that he he made a face like you know he made a face like <laughs> what can i say like it, it doesn't seem he was amused by that so i don't know like this actually depends on how much faith or how much loyalty he has on jun it actually depends um if that faith and loyalty starts wavering he might actually start doing things on his own and he might actually you know i don't know like turn on them in the future so we'll have to see um i do think that he has a decent amount of loyalty towards jun quite a lot of loyalty towards her but i don't know now here's one thing like now i'm saying that because if the loyalty still remains he probably won't do anything rash in the future but now that i think about it that might not be the case he might do stuff without letting jan know you know like without letting her know something he might do things in his own way and in front of jan he will be like oh i'm like you know i'm your loyal uh, follower or something like that and that's also another way he can do it in the future so we'll have to wait and see and um, yeah but he does it does seem like he probably will become a problem in the future so yeah like the way he reacted especially in this episode like i was not expecting that he suddenly said that oh let's kill ren and all that stuff and he's like oh then if ren actually attacks us um we are allowed to kill him aren't we or something like that he said so yeah that was a big thing now then we get to see the whole thing with ren ren kind of inside his um inner mem like you know like inner world where he's seeing the flashback of him killing crow and how he was and now i am thinking like you know like i remember when the episode when we heard that chrome killed one of the officials um like at that time i i thought that okay so uh, ren is kind of like a what can i say like an anti hero type of a character at, at least at that time so i was thinking like maybe if in the future he actually changes his mind and you know joins us and becomes good so like you know like these are like the bad things that he is doing in the past will there be any kind of uh uh what do you call it mm. what is it called any kind of retribution is that what it is called i think so like any kind of like, you know, will, will anything happen to him that will actually show that yeah he has gone past all that stuff and he's actually become a good th person will there be any kind of thing like that that will come in the future and this episode kind of gave me my answer yes he does actually suffer and he in a way this whole thing that happened like you know he almost got killed you can say that this was probably like a um uh, a retribution a divine retribution that he got because of you know his uh, things the things that the bad things that he had done in his past so i don't know like probably he repented for like you know like this thing probably was enough of re repentation for him and since he changed i guess everything is okay now because it did bother me at that time i was like okay like he basically killed a normal person like the person who wasn't even involved in any of this like here's the thing um if you like you know like in in anime and anywhere like you know like these type of characters who are kind of like in the dark side at the beginning uh, they might kill like a person who is going after them or something else like like self defense and all that stuff killing people while like you know defending yourself i guess that's okay in a way even though like you know taking life is not okay at all but still like if someone tries to kill you like obviously you have to defend yourself and you might end up killing the other person especially like you know in anime so that's fine i guess but he killed a person who was not even involved in any of this like in a way he was involved he was the efficient but still you know like he basically killed him just for fun like that was the thing that actually bothered me in, in that episode and i was thinking like is he going to get go away scot free i was thinking about this 
and no like and now that i'm like you know this episode is here and all those episodes we saw like you know ren actually kind of dying i realized that yeah he did not get scot free like you know he he had to suffer for that and yeah like i guess that's enough but still like you know like the sin that he had uh, uh what do you call it the sin that he had uh, committed <laughs> Oh my god i like my brain is not working today um the sin that he had committed before that um that won't go away never but he can repent for it in the future and he can make it that yeah i won't do anything like this in the future i'll help people i'll try to make the best out of my life like that's the main thing here. like uh, become a good person like you cannot do anything about your past the past has happened already it's set in stone so you just have to do everything better in the future and he understands that from this episode because we see like you know like I, I was under the impression that he was going to like you know wake up he was going to listen to what happened uh, yo did not like you know you, you opted out of the shaman fight because of this he's going to go crazy he's going to go mad he's going to like you know have like a little <laughs> quarrel or fight with you or something like that i thought it was going to go in that direction but i think the thing that actually um the reason why he did not become so enraged was the reason behind that is because he was kind of seeing that from like an like you know like some kind of an alternate reality you know when we see that his soul is kind of like you know hovering around he was able to see what was happening and he knew that Yo has actually opted out of the shaman fight to uh, revive him. And it, like, you know, like, instead of getting all the information in one time, he was able to slowly, slowly get all of that in. That's why I think his outburst in the end was a little bit lesser than I expected. And he also was able to understand the essence of life and everything, you know, and all that stuff. And that probably made him completely change. And he, after, even after waking up, he did not, like, you know, become mad at you or something he he was able to take it a lot better and he you know like went and thanked him like that's the biggest thing i like i was never expecting a thank you from <laughs> ren like i thought he was going to go and like you know like fight you or something after he realizes that you gave up the shaman fight for him but no he took that a lot more maturely and yeah that's the reason behind that is obviously because he was able to understand the things that he had did wrong in the previous like you know in the past and why he is suffering now and what he should do now after this he should try to make use uh, make the best use of his life that he got and do something better so yeah good like i, I really liked his character development here and it it really does feel like he is a part of the team now you know in a way like the, at least his ideals are a part like he has al always been a part of the team that's not the point here i'm saying that the the way his ideas he thought like yeah i'm going to do this his ideals and everything his ambition everything is also a part of the team now now he he is able to uh, look at the world uh, not through his hate uh, like you know filled eye uh, eyes he's able to see the world in a completely different light now and i don't know probably something like that but yeah that was like a really good thing i'm i'm glad that he understood everything and he was able to move past that and he hopes to make his the best use of his life that was that and um okay and then we get to the next part of the of horo horo and chocolate chocolate was trying to uh, you know trying to <clears throat> cheer up horo horo and i think chocolate i, I I guess like you know Chocolat kind of lagged behind like you know he kind of stopped there like I was thinking like during, during the confrontation with th those guys um, I don't remember the name of the house minion uh, during the confrontation I was thinking like where is Chocolat and then I realized that oh he was like you know like trying to cheer him up and then he suddenly stopped after like you know he, he was rejected by him so, <laughs> yeah okay so we get to meet two people here um the the big guy the um the one who like you know with this football like you know thing and the the other one was like a little person now the guy who 
with the helmet and with the, the, the football like you know like costume he as they explained he already went through a life like you know like ending situation like he almost died and the same is the thing with um the other guy the the little guy with the, <laughs> the legos he said something like yeah i also almost lost my life and this is how i am now you know like he has to like uh, replace his body parts with those legos and everything so they went through some like you know like those death situations although the situation which almost took their life that's why they are so strong now they're like 20,000 how much how much did he say 20,000 or 200,000 something like that Udoku. so <clears throat> and they're like you know like going to the um Iceman and they're like oh I, we want your soul and all that stuff he's saying so Horohoro in the beginning he was like no unfortunately I won't be able to do anything but obviously like you know he's not a person like that like he always has been compassionate about you know people and everything and so he you know he comes back and he confronts them gets beaten up pretty badly because obviously like you know five thousand uh two thousand and two hundred thousand furyoku that's like a huge difference and now here's the part which gets interesting um okay we see the dad here um Hororo's dad, Hororo's dad, the sister, and the officiant who was like you know his um uh, under whom he was you know like during the semifinals and everything uh, under whose supervision Hororo was that guy. So the dad he is five thousand furyoku, and <laughs> that was. <laughs> <laughs> that was like a very interesting scene he was like um no like uh he like you know horo horo has already become an adult he can handle himself so i won't interfere i'll just take my uh, ramps and like you know make a raft and go away <laughs> and he just walks into the beach starts taking up those wood planks and he's like yeah i'm making a raft raft and i'm just going away now obviously the reason why he did that, I'm sure of it, was because he wanted to show um, Horohoro that Furyoku doesn't mean anything. Like, it means, like, you know, something. Like, I'm not saying that. But, like, you know, like, basing everything on your Furyoku level, it doesn't make sense. You should not do that. Like, he's merely 5,000 Furyoku and he just, like, you know, <laughs> completely defeated them in, like, without even, like, you know... <laughs> doing anything he just like you know hit him once and all of them uh the, the the big guy the big guys um got defeated in just one shot so and then he just went on his way you know on his raft he just went away without even saying anything like that i'm I'm sure that was like a way he wanted to show horo horo that do not um you no know, do not feel inferior just because your furyoku is lesser than them there is a lot more things that goes into this like furoku is not everything it does matter but it it doesn't matter so much that you should like you know like this is no maths game you know like like 5000 is less than 20, 200000 so yeah i can't be able to do anything this is not like that there is a lot of other factors that goes into it as well and i think the heat said like you know the whole thing of spirit energy i think that's what they call or reroku that came into play here which it's kind of interesting as he says uh, as they say like it is something that like measures the core spiritual energy or something so furoku is something that i guess that multiplies that but that also means that if your reroku is high enough you can counteract the furoku for example um i'm going to take a mathematical example here mm -hmm. if furoku is something that multiplies your reroku if your reroku is one and you have like 200 million furoku your net uh, you know strength will be like 200 million or something at the same time if your reroku is like 200 million i'm just taking an easy example i'm not like sure if that this is the way it works if your reroku is like 200000 and your furoku is 1 you know you your total uh, power is again 200000 so it's something like that i guess 
like correct me if i'm wrong so <clears throat> that's basically it so yeah like i'm guessing um 5000 even with 5000 furyoku the dad had such a high enough reroku that he was able to counteract the 200000 uh, furyoku in just like so easily and yeah it, it's probably something like that so yeah it's interesting and so then we get to see the next scene where horohoro -Horo, i don't know what he did there like i'm guessing uh, the other you know uh, spirit uh, the other spirits who were contracted with the icemen i'm guessing they decided to fight alongside him because their masters are you know down that's probably why he, I, I think like you know like uh, kororo was already with him but at the same time all, all the other three spirits were also with him so it's probably something like that i guess and yeah now i'm I'm guessing we're going to see in the next episode we're going to see uh, horo horo versus that the lego guy <laughs> and uh, yeah we'll probably see how he handles this hopefully he's able to defeat him even though you know the furoku is a lot different like they had like 200 million and he has 2000 so we'll have to see if he's able to defeat him you know defeat that guy i'll we'll be able to understand that yeah horo horo also probably has a furoku level which is as strong as his dad so uh, not furoku sorry uh, reroku sorry uh, a reroku level which is as strong as his dad oh yeah that was it that was this episode um that was a good start and i'm guessing we're going to get more like probably next episode we're going to go into the tournament or something else we're going to see maybe we're going to see chocolate's part you know like i i guess next episode horohoro will start you know to understand yo's point of view and he, he said in this episode himself that okay they are not going to become shaman king so i'm going to i'm going to become shaman king <laughs> so he understood and it's it, in his own way i'm not so sure about chocolate now maybe he'll also have to come to an understanding or something probably the next episode we'll see something like that so yeah we'll have to wait so that's it so thank you guys for watching this was my reaction to shaman king episode number um 34 so if you guys enjoyed this video be sure to press the like button and subscribe if you're new to the channel or you haven't subscribed comment down below anything you want to say anything you want to let me know and i'll definitely check them out so that's it thank you guys for watching and i'll see you guys next week with another episode of shaman king until then goodbye and have a nice day